This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet, a slim front pocket wallet available in carbon fiber and titanium. With more than 250,000 sold, a lifetime guarantee and free shipping, get 10% off with the code GOLDFISH at RidgeWallet.com. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another instant deck tech. So as you know, Wednesday means it's wild. Wednesday means it's wild card Wednesday here in instant deck tech land. And today's deck is pretty wild. We are looking at Pauper Ponza. It's basically like the modern Ponza deck, but for the Pauper format. And it comes to us from Marbles with a Z and an underscore, who took it to a undefeated finish in a pauper league on Magic Online. So congrats to Marbles on a really cool deck. A quick reminder before we break down Pauper Panza for Pauper. <laughs> if you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made to videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So Pauper Ponza starts off looking a lot like modern Ponza, where we are looking to use the Arbor Elf Utopia Sprawl Ramp Plan, except we also have Wild Growth, which is kind of a old, not modern legal version of Utopia Sprawl, Basically the same thing. Makes a land tap for two mana. It's only green mana, but that's fine because we are a mono green deck. So with Arbor Elf and Utopia Sprawl and Wild Growth, there's a chance that we're making four extra mana on turn two and just playing really big things like land destruction spells really quickly. So after we start ramping, hopefully on turn one, maybe on turn two, the plan is to start playing land destruction again and again and again and again. So our worst land destruction is Thermocrust and Reclaim vines which are more or less just blow up a land thermocrost is our only three mana land destruction spell so that is relevant we only need one ramp spell on turn one to be able to thermocrost on turn two which means if we're on the play we put our opponent to zero lands if we're on the draw we put them to one lands reclaiming vines four mana i guess the upside is it hits artifact and enchantments that can be relevant if we run into like pestilence or affinity or something but mostly there to just blow up a land for four mana we also have our ramp land destruction, which is kind of key to the plan of this deck, because much like modern Ponza, not only are we looking to destroy lands, we're looking to destroy lands and ramp into some really big things. So Acid Moss is probably our best of the two, because it's just four mana, blow up a land, search for a forest. So we go from four mana up to five mana, make our land drop the next turn, we're up to six mana, plus we're putting our opponent down a land. Reap and Sow, if we want to also search for a land, it's six mana, because we need to entwine it. It's either like a rampant growth or a land destruction spell, but if we pay the two mana and twine cost, we get to do both. So hopefully we can hold off until we get to six mana and get the land as well. But if we just really need to blow up a land on turn four, don't have any other options, it's perfectly fine there as well. Finally, we have Mold Shambler, which is our really expensive land destruction spell. Upside is it leaves behind a 3-3 three, three body. We can always just play it as a hill giant of four mana 3-3. Three, three. Also blows up non-creature permanence, so kind of like reclaiming vines can get artifacts and enchantments so this is kind of the first part of our deck ramp in the early turns start blowing up lands again and again and again but then we need to finish out the game and one of the cool things about this deck is our finishers are not just finishers but they're also cyclers so in the early game crows and tusker is a ramp spell we can cycle it get a land put it in our hand also draw an extra card greater sandworm if we are in the early game we can just cycle it to find more land destruction so we're not going to get stuck with these really expensive finishers rotting in our hand when we need a land destruction spell or when we need to hit our land drops because we can always cycle them really cheaply. But then once we blow up a bunch of lands, develop our mana, play our acid mosses and our all that stuff to get the ramp going, then we just play these and they are super huge finishers. Pauper creatures don't get that big. So a 7-7 seven, seven, like Greater Sandworm, which also can be blocked by little creatures, is a really big way to finish out the game. Crows and Tusker kind of the same way if we're to the late game we just cast it and beat down and then the biggest and baddest of our finishers is Ulamog's Crusher this is the Emrakul the Eons Torn of the Pauper format obviously not quite as game ending but still an 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight with Annihilator 2 is just bigger than anything else that's going on in the Pauper format with our land destruction the Annihilator is even better because our opponent's not going to have just extra lands to sacrifice the Annihilate ability so a perfect finisher 
finisher for our ramp slash land destruction deck. We also have one more backup finisher, and this one I don't really understand, but Sprout Swarm, I guess in theory, it just makes a bunch of tokens in the late game. We can convoke it and keep making more tokens. I have absolutely no real justification or understanding of why this is. Maybe to fight around counter spells because it's instant speed, but it is a really slow finisher. Uh, and it might just be the troll factor. I mean, what is a more depressing way to kill your opponent than blow up every one of their lands and then just repeatedly make make one one sapling tokens with the buyback of sprout swarm until you kill your opponent one damage at a time with these one ones why they have no lands on the battlefield so that might be the reason too as far as the mana base pretty straightforward 18 forests nothing fancy going on in the sideboard we get a bit of removal gut shot scatter shot archer then we have nature's claim to deal with artifacts and enchantments also some life gain nile spell bomb just to exile the graveyard and that is Popper Ponza, and that's been our instant deck deck for today. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.